All right, so here we are with a base coated canine attack dog. Uh, this one I primed black first and then put a coat of lead belcher on. I've noticed that if you want a darker color to your metallic overall to do a black base coat first rather than just spray the lead belcher directly onto the plastic. Although if you're looking for a much brighter silver tone to your metallics, that's a good way to go or even priming white and then putting the lead belcher on. So for right now, we're gonna start out by picking out some of the details with Balthazar Gold. And again, there's nothing really specific showing you which one should be, or which bits should be brass, and which one shouldn't. So that's up to you. And if you need to, do a few thin coats rather than just trying to get all the coverage you want on one pass. Me, I'm gonna get this bit here, some of the trim there. Uh, the collar bit here. the spine, right there like that, and going up, ears, and then these side plates here, those ones I'm going to hit as far as the front, that looks okay. Chest, we will get uh, decorative borders on the chest piece, right? Chest plate, right there. Yeah, and that'll be good for that. It'll be good for that. So, yeah, when we come back when we have this coat all set. Uh, there's no set guide on which ones you should, on which ones to pick out, it's just entirely up to you. So next up, we are gonna go ahead and start adding some washes. So the first one we're gonna do is Nuln Oil Gloss. I'm not too concerned about the actual glossy appearance because we're gonna be doing a second wash right afterwards. This one is just because the, the Nuln Oil Gloss that I found, it tends to, uh, slide into recesses and fit there much bit much easier than the regular null oil so yeah we're just going to go ahead get this wash all over everything and then make sure that has plenty of time to dry before we move on to our next step okay so we have our first wash down you can see it's sort of dull things down a bit and sat in the recesses pretty well. So from here we're going to go ahead with a second wash of Agrax Earthshade to give the model a more of like a gritty industrial metal appearance and to tone down the gloss shine of the known oil we used. And same rules, same rules apply. Make sure you do a good job working in the recesses. Try not to let it cool up too much, and give them give the entire thing plenty of time to dry as you finished. Okay, so here we are with our fully washed K9 attack dog, and for our next step, it's just a very simple dry brush of lead belcher to pick out 
the higher the higher areas and provide a bit uh, provide a very basic highlight for both the silver and the gold metallic bits. There we go. The highlighting is done. And if you're not if this is good enough for you, then you are totally free to go ahead and base this to match the rest of your army and be done. Uh, but for me though, I'm gonna add a cup a bit of RJ Glow to a few specific points, then call it done. So for that. Okay, so take your fist in red, and what we're gonna do here is pick out any specific points that we want to add our glow effect to. So for me, we'll do this little bit here. Right there. Right on the chest. Um, go ahead and get the eyes as well. Let's see if I can get that in a shot. One, two. And I think we'll also add some glow to his spine here. So as I was saying, what we're gonna do is build up successfully lighter and lighter colors, stopping with a, with a little bit of white and then give all of these red spaces here a wash with some Vallejo fluorescent paint and we will be done. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and move up to Fire Dragon Bright. Yeah, the amount of layers you do for this is totally up to you. You could add in quite a few more. You could even just go straight from this to white but I found for smaller bits like this, it works best to have at least a couple of colors in the gradients. Having more colors will make the wash we do at the end look a bit look smoother. But then you're also you're also working with the fact that for this model in particular, the spaces, the bits that are going to be glowing are actually really tiny. Now, if you're doing something like uh, the Hex Beast and you're doing their growths and whatnot, glowing, you know, glowing with Hex Power, then yeah, you definitely, then definitely take the time to build up uh, that gradient. But for things like eyes, probably not so much. All right, there we go. We got a little bit there. So for the eyes, I think I'm going to keep them as they are until I add in the white. Oh, let me get the bits here in the front. Eyes will be good. Skip the yellow and just go straight to white from there. For everything else, I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow too. And we'll be using flash to get some yellow. Again, we're not gonna be going quite as far down with the yellow as we did with the orange earlier. Okay. Here, we're just gonna be focusing on the just the very tops, and just a little, little bit. All right, so here we go with our last bit for the actual model. I always made a wash of about uh, one drop of Vallejo fluorescent red with about three brushfuls of uh, Lamy medium. I'll probably do a little bit more normally, but I'm scraping the I'm scraping the paint pot right now. Let's go and add in a little bit. Don't be too concerned if some of the if some of your wash gets onto other parts because that'll just help with the actual with the overall glowing effect. There you go. There's your glow done. For some, for some areas, you might want to do a couple of coats of it, just to make sure it, just to make sure it blends pretty well, depending on how much white you'd used before. 
And now we're just going to add, you're just going to paint the rim. And the flat part of the, the inside of the base here. Black, just to make it easy for our future, or whatever base scheme you would like to do. Okay, so here you can see the completed canine attack dog. For the basing, I put down a bit of a grill and earth, washed it with Reckland Flesh Shade, and then a quick dry brush of Tyrant Skull at the end. I know this isn't the best painting tutorial, but I did learn a lot about how to record and edit these, so future efforts will be improved. Until then, take care guys.